In this project, we're going to go ahead and walk through an example of a blade optimization where we're going to use TechPlot Chorus to evaluate multiple designs of an unsteady solution. We'll go ahead and start by creating a new project and we'll just use an existing database and this is a blade optimization so we'll call it blade and uh, we'll also just denote what code we used which was fluent uh, and I'll also just make a quick reference to the fact that pointwise uh, provided this data so I'll just go ahead and, and reference them here um, there's two ways to bring in data in TechPlot Chorus. The most important for this example is we're going to bring in data using a file crawler. And this is uh, in a directory called Unsteady Blade Optimization. And this is related to a webinar we put on uh, just about five months ago, early in 2011. So we'll call this Blade. Now you notice when I hit Blade that it found in my data files that blade was used to denote independent variables or initial conditions. The next thing we're going to do is uh, also take advantage of the fact that time was included in the data file. Now these are representative time steps. In principle you may just have one solution file that has all the time steps. It really kind of depends on uh, how the data were exported. And the last thing we're going to do is bring in the data themselves. They've been converted to PLT files and this is just the raw data. Okay, so as a start point, um, we're going to just make sure that this is time here and uh, make sure they're both capitalized. And when I hit finish, course is going to go through, it's going to look at all the data that I have in my project and it's going to bring them up in the simple view, just looking at the, uh, the independent variables. Now, let's just grab, uh, say, the second blade configuration and we'll look at the data. We'll start from ground zero. So we have the data, we're going to bring this into our visualizer, and this is almost like, uh, in, in effect, we want to analyze one representative data case and then use that as a start point for uh, every additional case. So perhaps the easiest thing to do would be to, um, let's see here, we'll, we'll just take a look at these three blades. And because we're most interested in vortex shedding, we're going to turn on a contour and change this to say the uh, turbulent viscosity and so that's kind of the the vortex shedding of this uh, three blade system and just to get a sense of the overall fluid dynamics we'll throw in some stream traces and uh, we'll just put in a rake of 10 so this is our base image that we're going to use to post-process the, the rest of the results. You may actually have images as a start point and you certainly could have brought them in at that time. So we'll save this frame quickly as a template and we'll call this temp1. doesn't really matter again the, the idea is that if I'm building out a project I want to be able to do this quickly. Uh, next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to go back into our chorus tool. We're going to select all the results and we're going to create a series of plots based on this template that we just created we're going to hit OK and that's going to go ahead and do this in the background and so while it's doing that let's go ahead and bring in uh, some results which actually in this case are going to come from a CSV file that was created during the initial project so uh, we'll go in and we're going to append data and the data that we're going to append is in fact just derived quantities and we'll go ahead and oh, looks like we just make sure we're in the right directory structure so the unsteady blade optimization and uh, we'll go ahead and grab this output totals and uh, make sure that we're again browsing to the right directory and the reason we want to do this is that uh, in effect if there are any data files that we want to link to one could do that during this process so I'm gonna go ahead and go next there is a file link I'm not going to link to that file necessarily and instead of time step just to be consistent, I'll say time, and you can see that it picked up that my database already has these two initial conditions. A quick OK. And uh, now we actually have, if I just zoom out a bit, now we have some derived quantities that basically we're looking at one blade configuration at 11 representative time steps. And these are the integrated pressure on those blades over the time that uh, we're looking for the simulation. So let's 
take a quick gander at uh, those results by evaluating, say, as a function of uh, time. And uh, what we'll do is we'll look at the total integrated pressure. We'll go ahead and group these by blade. We are really interested in looking at each individual blade. In this case, it's blade configuration. Blade 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are, are generations. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, just summarize this by time. So what you're looking at here are the integrated pressures on the blade for each of the five blade generations. And what we'd like to do is just quickly fit those data. So we'll apply a quadratic response surface to the data uh, in my database. And we'll show those. Each line now represents the integrated pressures. I will then just very quickly look at each blade. So I can look at blade 1, blade 2, blade 3, blade 4, which is giving us the, the best performance for the system, and blade 5. So I can very quickly kind of walk through what's going on with each of my data. Now, the other thing I'd like to be able to do is bring in the images. So I've just created these plots. I'm going to deposit them into my database now that they've completed in the background. And I'm going to take a look at my blade configuration as a function of, say, time and uh, blade. So let's, let's start first by just changing the axes. It's probably more appropriate to look at blade versus time versus uh, the other way around. And uh, I'm going to just zoom out a bit. So what you're looking at is for five blade generations, we're looking at um, the turbulent viscosity. So it's almost like that vortex shedding around each. If I want to look at a given time step, say time step four, I can now look at time step four. And I'm going to view the data. We'll use temp one. And now in my visualizer, I can then analyze all of these results. And so if I wanted to, say, zoom in uh, on just one blade set here, I can look at that very easily. Another thing that I can do, if I wanted to look at it more of a qualitative view for that same blade configuration, I can view all the plots that I have for this, and then take a look at the very first generation and compare it to each subsequent uh, generation to see what the net differences are. And uh, then we really want to understand this is the fourth configuration, which ultimately uh, gave us the best performance. Uh, this is an easy way to see that. So now I've really kind of gone through and looked at this data in two ways. I've been able to show that I can actually analyze or walk through each blade configuration, and I'll view those images now, where I can walk through almost like an animation if I choose to, where I can now see how this system is performing, which is like an animation. And then long term, you'd probably want to just dump this out as an AVI. And certainly, that capability will be there. Uh, the other thing that I can do, though, if I just wanted to look at a given time step, is I can then quantify what those differences are. So it gives me a nice way to view this system and understand why was blade configuration number four the optimal design. By evaluating each individual one, you can see where, in fact, if you zoom in on this area, we actually have less formation of vortices on the leading edge, and actually we have shedding on just the trailing edge, which gives us the better performance. And that's how one can use TechBlock Chorus to evaluate an unsteady set of data.